Hello and welcome back to Game Over Go Command. This is of course Go Command. And this is of course Metroid Prime. And when we last left off, we were about to pick up this item, but we didn't. And I didn't explain why, and now I'm going to show you why. The Thermal Visor. So this is our first additional visor. And now that we have this, something oh, terrible is going to happen. Well, the doors are closed. That doesn't seem that bad. Oh, but now it's really dark in here and we can't see anything. Alright, so first of all, I need to scan this guy. So I didn't get to scan this dude last time. But as you can see, he's kind of invisible, which makes him hard to... Hard to pick up. Thermal visor interfaces will be sent to quarantine area. These visors will be useful for any personnel involved in transporting of the unstable test subject there. So that's another reference to the boss we're going to fight this episode. Oh man, scanning this guy. You can only scan him when he's visible, which is uh, usually if you shoot him, they'll be visible for a second. Alright, let's just show off this new visor. So now you can see them. Ah. This is where the, the controls on this version, because it makes swapping out the um, visors much more difficult. Because you, you can only scan these guys, like I said, like when they're actually... when they're actually visible, which is very little of the time. Damn stealth pirates. Alright, well, fuck it. I'm just gonna kill him. Basically, they turn invisible. And it's annoying. But this is the thermal visor. And as you can see, everything's lit up. And you can kind of... You see how this doesn't... How it has this cool effect on the uh, weapons and everything. I quite like the way this visor looks. So, when I said it was like Predator, you can see what I mean. And... I said things are getting risky. These guys are locked in here. It makes uh, Metroids, obviously, a little bit easy to keep track of. There's a lot of enemies in this game which uh, you can fight a little bit easier with this particular visor. So the reason I left this for this episode is because you actually have to backtrack all the way back to uh, where we came from, but... I kind of didn't want to do it in the same, well not only was the episode already really long, I mean like normally I would uh, cut the backtracking out, but since we're doing this all with the new visor, things are a little bit different, so I thought it should be, definitely be its own episode. And uh, I'm just going to keep this thing charged, because I know there's another Metroid up here somewhere, over this side, here it is. This is also where they introduce a new puzzle mechanic, which is going to be found a little more frequently throughout the rest of the game. Oh, uh, we've got a Metroid on us. Sorry, as it states, just... Drop a bomb and you're right. And there we go. So, that door locked on us and we can't open that. But you can see these things here. And this is what space pirates use to power their technology, so... We have to go back through this entire room and find all three, all three of these. Or is it just the one? Oh, it's just the one here. Oh, and this is another new enemy. This is a security drone. Well armed and armored security mech, security drones have limited intelligence but do their, assigning t their assigned tasks well. Being machines, they are susceptible to electric attacks when alerted drones initiate security lockdown and attempt to neutralize the intruder. The electronic warfare suit can scramble visor technology as well, so... When they get close, they mess up all your vision. That can be a little... It can be a little annoying to... ...to fight, but they're not that bad, really. A couple of shots from the, uh... ...from the wave beam, and, and they, they're taken down. There's uh, so stored open. So actually, the whole path from all the way back is completely, uh, at this point of the game, is completely... ...in the dark. Basically, we took out the power for the entire 
base of operations. And where's this elevator? So we need to make our way back upstairs. Now are they all this kind? Yes, they are all this type of space pirate. Platform active. Oh, you're not a space pirate. So you don't really have to fight them, you can just kind of... I just wish there was an easier way to uh, scan these sons of bitches. Maybe there's one up on a ceiling somewhere that I can... spot that I can scan before he... Ah, there we go. So there's one up there. Let's just move further over this side. Oh, has he already spotted me? That was fast. Damn stealth pirates. Alright. That's why you have to jump. Because <laughs> you end up, you broke that window last time. I don't know how they got up here without jumping up there to be honest. It seems a bit like not a very well designed, uh, well thought out piece of architecture, but whatever. Spice pirates, I guess. They're, they're a funny bunch. Catch us back up to the surface. Now there's gonna be more of those flying pirates. We're going to pretty much just completely ignore them and just run straight through. Because no one cares about you guys. And there's a siren in the background. I wonder if it's a fire engine or an ambulance or a police car. Let me know what you think it is in the comments below. And if you're right, you get the grand prize of... I wouldn't know if you were right or not, so really. Yeah, so we're just going to quickly go save through, just just in case, because you never know. Saving is pretty important. Apparently the room, the lights are still on in this room for, for whatever reason. Intriguing. Gonna make our way down to the bottom here. Ugh, space pirates, get off me. Get off me! You're dead to me. Oh, he's just a regular space pirate. I don't even get a cool log thing from him. That's annoying. You can still kind of see what's around here. So now, uh, as you remember, we also got the super missile, which we haven't actually used yet. So we'll be able to use that for the first time in just a moment. Once we get past these security drones, we're messing up my visor. They can do quite a bit of damage to these guys if you let them, which I am, because I'm terrible at the game. Because I'm terrible at video games. Thankfully we won't ever have to come through this area again, there's actually a shortcut that opens up <coughs> later on, which is something I guess I haven't really talked about, is the way the shortcuts work in this game. There are little um, alternate routes everywhere, which I guess, if you've played through the uh, Souls games, it's a similar sort of sort of idea. Handled, it's handled a little bit differently, but it's essentially the same, the idea of uh, things in the environment opening up and giving you... Alright, so we're going to, right here, you can see that that is where that thing was. And we're going to hit that with a super missile and we get a, it was a missile expansion all along. But that was essentially a super missile. Nothing incredibly exciting to, to watch, but, you know. And we're almost done with this area. Um, I'm just trying to think of having, like, I don't really have any issues with this particular visor other than it kind of makes everything look a little bit dull. Um, at least it does in some areas. Some areas still look pretty cool. But a lot of the game kind of looks a little bit, a little bit boring once you, uh, also these guys can't follow you through doors, so if you don't want to worry about all this shit, you can just beeline it straight through there and they can't follow you. And Metroids will actually, um, if you take a Metroid through one of those doors, it'll actually just explode when it comes through, which is kind of hilarious, so that's a pretty easy, glitchy way of uh, taking care of Metroids. But we're just going to beeline 
Straight through here. We don't need to waste time fighting guys, we don't have to. This is where that guy was the first time, but it looks like he's no longer here. And hey, now we're back outside again. Beautiful. That's that save point, of course. So now we're back to where this was, which you might remember from the last episode. And I said there wasn't a whole lot we could really do with it, because there wasn't. But now, first up, use a super missile to uh, destroy that. And now if we equip our thermal visor, you'll see that there's a little, little power cylinder there. So that opens that door, but... Simple as that. Progress, everybody. And this is a, another new area that we're entering now. This is a quarantine area. And you'll see why it's quarantined very, very soon. I like these little things, these little areas too. We get to roll around. They just kind of like show off the... Uh, show off the game world a little bit. It's very cool. Well, I think it's very cool. So I wonder what horrors lurk just below here. There's a big pile of rocks, I guess. And this is Thardis, the big boss area for the Fendrana Drifts. Um, as you can see, he's got a couple of cool attacks. He does that, that rock attack there. Not a rock attack, that um, ice attack. But I hear, and he also does this thing where he rolls around. And basically the best thing to do when he starts doing this is just to roll up and hide in a corner. You might be wondering, well, your attack sounds like damage, and you would be right. The only way to attack him at this point is to go into thermal and then use the wave beam to target specifically these areas. And then once you hit one of these areas, that will expose the phase on stone underneath. But we're gonna scan him. Which is something I should have done from the first point, it's the first place, and get a little more information. Thardis, an animated sentient creature of stone charged with phazon radiation. The ra phazon radiation gives off by Thardis negates auto-targeting systems, preventing lock-on. It may be possible to acquire alternate targets with a different visor. The chaotic nature of phazon <laughs> radiation leads to instability in its structural integrity. Thardis can encase targets in ice, and its colossal size and strength make it a formidable opponent. So basically, use the... Uh, thermal visor to find where the phazon is and then once you blasted all the cold rock off it it just leaves the exposed phazon which I don't know personally like there's different ways of approaching it I prefer using the uh, power beam on the phazon and the wave beam on the on this part but I mean you don't have to necessarily stick to that to doing things that way there are multiple ways of beating this guy in terms of that, that's just my personal preference. He's a pretty cool boss, I think. Now, originally in the concept art, you can see there's actually another version of him, which is... The only thing that's a bit annoying about... About that, uh... Oh yeah, when you shoot these, you actually get health and things out of them, so... It's a good idea to try to keep track of those. Um, oh yeah, in the, I was saying, in the concept art, there's actually pictures of a lava one of these. So I think originally he was going to be the boss of the Magmore Caverns. And then at some point they moved him into the... They moved him to Frendrana Drifts. For reasons that have never really been specified, but I guess he works here. I don't think there's actually any boss fights in Magmore Caverns from memory. It's a pretty neutral area. In, in that sort of context. 
You can actually hurt him too when he's rolling around, but it's pretty difficult to actually land a good shot on him. Oh, we got him already. Man, I'm doing pretty well. Can't change weapons while you're frozen, that's, a, I, that's pretty funny. He doesn't do a massive amount of damage, like getting hit by him is not a big deal. On hard mode, you actually pretty much have to destroy every single one of the rocks in his body though, which is pretty insane. It's a pretty tall order. Actually hitting him though, like because he's obviously getting his hands and stuff in the way, can be a little difficult. Taking out these things on the GameCube version was a lot difficult, more difficult because I needed to use the auto lock on, so I basically had to really quickly like lock onto everything and at least this way I can stay locked onto that area where it's weak and then pinpoint the actual rocks that it that need hitting. Okay, so this is where things get a little bit trickier, I think. He's going to fog out the entire room. Which is going to force us to use this visor because you literally cannot see anything once he does this. I'll go back to regular view. There we go. Complete whiteout. Which is a clever way of forcing people to use the uh, this ray, this one a little bit more. Doesn't necessarily make him any harder, but it's just a nice little touch, I guess, to make it feel like this staggering the fight a little bit. Of course, now I have to try to find his weak spot while I'm blind, which is a little bit more difficult. Just a tiny bit. It is quite a long boss fight. It does take quite a lot of hits to uh, to take him out. Now, of course, I can also, if I can get a clear shot, a super missile will do it in one hit, but I'm always super cautious about using it because of the the fact that these other um, rocks constantly get in get in the way of the your attacks, and it makes it I think a little less secure. It makes me feel a little less secure about about using them frequently. So I can never quite tell just how many hits I've actually had on him. Especially when he's in thumb, um, in this mode. Because in thermal mode you can never actually really tell if you're hitting him or the, the other stones. Although I got him that time pretty good. Nope, still needs one more before it gets rid of the fog. I would do think this is probably well, definitely one of the longest boss fights in the game. Well, maybe, maybe they're all about this long. I'm not. No, stop to think about it. Like I guess the uh, giant plant creature wasn't exactly short. I guess comparing it to the mini bosses, it's definitely a lot longer. And another one down. I think he only needs another good two or three hits and it'll be all over. Let's get rid of all that fog. Fog? Fog. What am I talking about? Speak English, Dan. It's a pretty cool effect the way he does that though. I like it a lot. And you can, yeah, trying to hit him when he's doing this, I don't know, you can do it. You can't lock on when he's rolling, which is kind of strange. I'm not sure why that is. Why they opted to design him that way. I guess to make it a little bit harder, perhaps. Uh, come on! So I think this part here, like, I'm definitely hitting... I was definitely hitting a lot of his other body parts instead. Uh, come on, man. But I do like the fact that you can actually see where these big gaping holes are, where there used to be big rocks that were part of his body that are now just completely gone. Oh, come on, that was close. One more. Oh man, he needs one more hit. And he is down. And that, my friends, was Tardis. Tardis.
That moment there where uh, Samus gets hit with the uh, rock. I love that. Oh, I haven't researched these ones. This is the Ultra Energy replenishes 100 units of energy. So that's something else that's new. And here we have an all new item. What is this? Spider Ball acquired. Press and hold Z with a morph ball to uh, crawl around and shit. So basically, there is a couple of things we need to do here. We have to go up into there, but first, there is an energy tank we can acquire here as well, which we are going to go and get ourselves right now. I think it's in. This part here, I always forget which of the two it's in. There's like an easy one to get to and a not so easy one to get to. Oh wait, that's two of the elevators. So maybe it is this one over here. That is the lovely, lovely sound of our dog Chester rolling around on the floor with his little vest on. Isn't he adorable? What a little cutie. Oh man, I forgot which one of these is which. Oh wait, that's where I came in, never mind. I was going the right way, I'm an idiot. Idiot, Dan. Stupid idiot, man. Yeah, this is where I came in. I was going the right way all along. And now there is actually... Actually, there's another one up there, is there? Oh, no, I can't get there. Now there is one of these guys in here, which we obviously don't want to mess around with. So very quickly they replaced that boss with a uh, another threatening... <laughs> Threatening creature. Alright. I'm pretty sure this is the way to go to get the energy tank. Oh, now he's awake. Well, too bad, so sad. Well, there's only one way to find out. I know it's definitely the way you're supposed to go to progress the game, I just don't know that it's the way to go to get the energy tank. Oh, the energy tank's up here, that's right. Oh, you need the ice beam to get that. Whoops, that was a spoiler. Well, let's see where this goes. Magmore Caverns, eh? Well, I guess we're going to make our way to the next save point, and that's going to be this episode. Like, I guess I don't remember where the next save point is. I'm sure it's not too far away. And this will, after all, be a new area of Magmore Caverns, so... Can't complain about that. Seeing new things, that's what it's all about. And we've got sort of these things, which are pretty annoying. Ah, yes. Now we've got flying guys in Magmore Caverns. So many. Well, speaking of upgrades. There is actually a puzzle in this room that we can solve. Let's see this purple door here. So let's do that, shall we? This episode is only 20 minutes long, we can get a bit longer. This machine is functional, but it is current, but not currently receiving power. Three nearby conduits must be energized for it to open. Blast of electrical energy will energize the conduits. The conduits radiate some heat that is invisible to the normal spectrum. Sounds like what they want us to do. Is shoot these. I wonder what will happen once we power up all of these. Intriguing. I love how dark this area is, even though I've got the thermal visor and you'd think it'd be really, the rocks would be really warm, but apparently they're not for some reason. Okay, so now this machine actually pumps in like, cooling, uh, cooling stuff. Alright, so we need to just quickly figure out where that gap was. It's right there. Gotta watch out for those guys. They're obviously a bit of a pain. This is a timed exercise, so we don't want to be triggering... Oops. Don't want to be getting caught up by those guys. Access to East Channel Door granted lava within channel has been cooled. So we just have to do this a couple times, and I think we get an energy tank at the end of this? From memory? Now the time is kicking in. So that's the east gate. 
which I believe is... Ah, oh, it sucks having to be so careful around these guys. Okay, just this one. Ooh, that was close. That guy got a little too close to, for comfort. Alright, so I've got one more after this. Access the North Channel door granted, Lava Within Channel has been cooled. And we're gonna get ourselves, I th think... If this ends up being a missile expansion, I'll be like, ugh. But I do th believe that it is definitely a energy tank, because this would be a lot of effort to go to for a missile expansion. Yep, energy tanks. We have half the energy tanks in the game now. And the music should turn to normal, so the machines are permanently cooling everything in here now. And this guy's being generous enough to get us out of here the quick and easy way. So thank you, little bug. Alright, so let's get out of this place and make our way to the nearest safe point. Wherever that is. I don't remember. Remember that's where it came in. Let's have a quick look at the map here. Could go either way, I guess. Ah! There's not a whole lot we can do here. Because this, I cannot destroy. What's up with that? Unstable Benzium debris is blocking path. Benzium is once again an item that we... Oh, actually, maybe the super missile does it. Not even the super missile can destroy it, so... I wonder what we're going to do about that. I wonder where we're going to go, what we're going to do. Oh, I just fell in love, and that's not a good thing. Alright, so we're going to make our way to this door over here instead. Generally, at this point in the game, I keep my wave beat on just because this is what most doors at this point in the game use. What am I doing? Oh. Uh, this is a new enemy. Have I scared these before? No, these are a new enemy. This is the Puddle Spores, sentient floating lava mollusk protected by an impenetrable shell. A Puddle Spore opens when approached, attempting intimidating with its size. When open, direct fire to its mantle. Causes it to flip into a substantial defensive position. If it can slam shut it, ejects a spread of harmful energy globally. So it doesn't really hurt you, you just kind of use it as a platform when you're scooting around. Pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. And this is another new room, which we will be spending quite a bit of time in later on in the game. This is actually a very important item in this room you get in the late game. Come on, turn over, thank you very much. So I get the feeling by the time I get to uh, the next save point, I'm going to almost have a new item ready to go. Oh, this is kind of cool. So there's this guy here, right? He's a bit of a pain. What can we do about it? Well, let's shoot a super missile at uh, this thing here and voila! Problem solved. I guess this is that point in the game where the, 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 there is a start. Blah, 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 if I can speak English, the, there is starts to get like a bit more of a gap between each uh, each item. So this is the point where the, the episodes will start getting a little bit longer. I just, for some reason thought there was a, there was a save point after the uh, after the uh, that boss fight for whatever reason. I guess I just wasn't remembering straight. I don't really worry too much about these guys. I don't really do much in the way of damage, so I don't really care too much about them. This will become an even quicker area to get through later on once we um out of the way. Once we get the grappling hook back, we can just swing on through here very, very quickly. It saves a lot of time. whole lot less hopping around. Alright, so there's two ways around this room. You can go through here, which we're about to do. This is where the spider ball comes in handy. So the spider ball was actually introduced in Metroid 2 on the Game Boy, and because Metroid, Prime, uh, Metroid 2 was a side-scroller, you could basically climb up any 
any wall. It's very straight, very straightforward. Obviously, being in a 3D environment like this, it doesn't make sense to have you be able to climb absolutely everywhere because that would break the game, which is uh, obviously not something that they want. Uh, we're going to be going up that elevator in a minute, but this is another little. I can't remember if this leads somewhere else or. Well, I think it does. Talon Overworld West Granted. Here we go. Back to the Talon Overworld. Hopefully, somewhere where there's a safe station. I don't remember. As, as I progress through the game, I remember less and less. Even though I've played through it, through it so many times. I always started getting like my idea of where things are kind of messed up. And I don't know why that is. Whereabouts has this dropped us off? Let's find out. Why would it send us to the Talon Overworld? Beetles. Beetles! Most peculiar. So this is actually a pretty neat area that we're in here. It's kind of like an old... old tree. Ancient tree. Just forms bridges everywhere, which is pretty neat. I like it. Not a whole lot of new content to scan or anything though. So uh, I do know where I am. And I do know where we're going. Uh, we will be going up there much later in the game to get some more cool shit, but for now... This is going to take us back to somewhere that you should be very familiar with by now. And that place being... Back up here. Which you might recognize as a... Uh, well, the Chozo entrance to the Chozo Ruins is just over there. And that's where we're going to go next episode, but for now we're going to head back to... La 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 la... Our ship, so we can save. Sorry Beatles, no one cares. So that is it for this episode. I hope you had a good time and I hope you'll join me next time because we're going to go and get ourselves another new weapon. Everyone loves weapons and it's one of my personal favorite weapons in the game. You know, there's only really a handful. But yeah, I like it. So I hope you'll join me for that. Uh, next episode there will be some uh, cutting because we're going to be doing some backtracking which obviously isn't particularly exciting. So uh, I hope you'll join me next time for the, getting this new funky cool weapon and um, I'll catch... Oops, I just triggered that again. I'll catch us next time. Have a good one. Yeah.